hello guys welcome to another quick video today we will be looking at one thing that we have uh, here in the manual that's the Roxxon manual and I got new custom uh, tags for the Roxxon that's the new tag and the old one is below so as you can see much of the snow is gone uh, spring is here finally we still have some ice on the ground in the mornings everything is still frozen and the rocks are sitting on a puddle you know on a bunch of ice but underneath you can see it's frozen it's uh, melted it's water look at that look at that take a look at that so the ground of course is darker so when uh, it's daylight you know the some of the uh, radiation from the sun comes through and then it, it warms up the ground so let's get this started waiting for the thing to heat up the grid heater this doesn't have glow plugs it took a little bit longer today and there we go all fired up so um what we're gonna do today is we're gonna change the tags on the rocks or put on the customized plates uh what i didn't know was my plates when i bought the rocks are expired on uh, 31st of december 2018 but since then it's been so cold i haven't driven much so yeah we're gonna back out get it to somewhere a little bit more convenient and then we will proceed with the two items we have on our mind today which are to change the tags take out the old one put in the new registration put in the new insurance that way i have everything in one spot i can just grab the bag and go and the second thing we're gonna be doing is um, looking at the spark arrestor, which is a very important component on this rock uh, Many people forget about those, but if you have a tune, especially, it applies to everybody, but especially if you have a tune and you're going, you know, you're putting all these miles on your rock and you still have the stop exhaust system that could be quickly become a big big problem for you so uh now we have it in a more convenient place we're gonna let it to uh sit warm up it takes forever for this disease to warm up it takes forever and uh where we're gonna be working today is gonna be right there below underneath as you can see right there that's the where you have the scatter rest at the tail end of the exhaust system the very bottom you have that plug so that's gonna be where we'll be working region now of wall missing in action it's a little bit uh, killed it I didn't put it on right so first things first that's the the new plate we got it's a custom plate i was looking for rock saw but rock saw was taken uh we'll take out the old one and that's the wrench that you need um you could use different sizes i mean the rock saw body is already drilled and i have a nut hold it on the inner side that's what you, you don't see on these pictures so i'm just cracking them there to get them loose last time i rolled which was a couple of days ago i got a whole bunch of mud on the rock saw uh to make it fit the way i did what i did was you know just twist it a little bit you could do it with your fingers but i just i didn't want to have all that stress so i just used that thing you could use a vice you could use whatever just to give it a little curve that's way too much i didn't need that much of a curve and you will see when i pull out the old one that it didn't have uh, that much of a little of a curvature that's just to make it conform with the body of the rocks are so that's what it looks like and that one is valid for the whole of 2019 up to 2020 and that's a tri fit you can see where you have the holes there's just two holes where you can actually fit them and that's the final product uh it looks pretty good to me i like it it uh identifies the rocks off for what it is and those in the know would know what the r o x r means rocks are even though i'm missing an o I love it.
and uh, yeah so here's the second project um, if you go to page 56 of uh, the handbook you have the maintenance 56 57 of the spark arrester so um, you have clean every 300 hours 36 months or 9,000 miles or 15,000 kilometers for those who are in Canada uh, Quebec surtout. and uh, we can go ahead and see uh, what the spark uh, arrester does is it it, it, it it slows down the exhaust to the point where um, everything coming out it slows it down even further compared to what the muffler does and then it has this fine mesh material in there that's supposed to actually if uh, a spark touches it you know the temperature would be even lower and it would just you know kill the spark uh, the reason they do this is because the rock saw is classified in the united states as a utv so it's susceptible to be used in national parks and other areas where you have um you know pure grassland nobody virgin grassland and uh if you pull up with your rock saw and it's dry you can start a fire very easily or if you shoot out a, an ember from the engine and then it starts a fire so that's the place where we're gonna be working you can see that's a spark arrestor and that's my speed sensor right there uh, i'm less than 1500 on this rock saw uh, my V number but I have the yellow thing you know that they put on there for a little while before they restricted people using uh, so software but that was to tell him in case you took it off and they'll say hey yeah you took it off you went too fast with your router and uh, you voided the warranty typically for brand new vehicles that I buy uh, I try never to get back to the dealer so I am usually I usually do my modifications and stuff on the conservative side. Uh, it works out for my purposes because I grew up in Africa. It is superbly built, so I have no worries, you know, doing stuff that I do. Uh, I don't try to get in above my head, and uh, yeah, so far the works has been good to me. So here I'm trying to take it out. Uh, I tried an eleven. Uh, 11 millimeter and it didn't work so i used a vice grip and it, that also didn't work i spun it out a couple of times and i was afraid that i would ground out that uh, that uh, plug in the, in the. so <clears throat> this is what the handbook says if you get the roxo handbook online you can check it out it's online just do a search a Mahindra Rocks or Handbook. Scroll to about page 61, I believe. Sequential page, pages is 61, but if you have the handbook in your hand, it's actually page 56 and 57. So what does it say? It, say, it tells you the same thing, you know, uh, spark arrester, clean every 300 hours, 36 months, 9,000 uh, miles. A few people have gotten close to 3,000 miles. I think I've seen a video of some guy who is at about 3,000 plus. That's just nuts. Uh, I believe it's somebody from south of where I am because there the weather might be good. There you can see the spark arrestor, what it looks like. It's housed actually inside that muffler cage. It's something you can actually take out uh, for some UTVs like the Kubotas, you can actually take them out, replace them, wash them, and put them back in. So I tried the vice grid, that did not work. So I'll have to head back inside and grab another two to, to try out. Uh, it looks a bit dirty. I drove it a couple of days ago. Uh, but just note, like where you have that spring, you see that? There's a zerk right there on your left. Just little details like that, little stuff like that. If you're greasing your rock salt, make sure you grease that zerk on the left. Yeah, that grease fitting. So finally, I grabbed, I believe that's a 3 8 standard. I believe, yep, 3 8 uh, That would work. And I also believe for metric, a 10 millimeter should work. 3 8 he has, he had a little, little, little uh, play. But that sucker was under tight, I can tell you that. 
uh, the muffler because these diesels they could run for an hour and it's a little bit just below freezing right now just a little bit below freezing um, so those can get really really hard and tight and uh, just remember how metals work you know they expand when they get warm and then they contract when they get cold so if you put in that uh, plug back on when it's hot the muffler is hot everything is hot see I'm feeling that I can actually touch it with my hand I would say it was about 80 degrees 80 90 degrees to 100 after idling for about 10 minutes well so if your if your muffler is hot when you take it off or uh, it will be easy and if you are putting it back on just be aware if it's hot don't put it on too tight don't try to kill it because the next time you go to take it off it will be damn near impossible to get it off so just be careful so there is here finally i get it to break i'm taking it off i was laying on some snow so you just have to be careful that's the, the certification from uh, the u.s tax and forest service great organization made in taiwan for the uh, for the blog that's what it looks like clean threads i thought he had a, a thread locker on there possibly it might it might not but it was under pretty tight which is good so i dropped it down the thread up a little bit so it doesn't disappear into the snow this is the very last of the snow supposed to have about 45 degrees almost 50 degrees to make 25 degree increase that would be awesome so a little bit of the sound from the engine idling that's what it sounds like and then uh, Back it out. This is after I've done the trim, and the way you do the trim after you take off that plug, I inadvertently edited that part out. But you just step on the gas, step on the gas, step on the gas. Engine will rev, rev, rev. Yeah. For mine, I didn't get any sweep out, so that's good. But I have a hot tune though. Just to let you guys. I'm just going for fun. And you want to sound like a trail, step on the gas, step on the gas. But if you don't have your seat belt on, it wouldn't do this trick. It wouldn't let you rev the engine up that high. And uh, I have that little snow mound there before it goes. I'll try a little bit, see if I can get on there. And just a word of caution, you know. At times, this being a manual four-wheel drive, it's not everything is not electronically co uh, controlled. You might have to play with those shifters a little bit until you break them in after maybe 1,000, 2,000 miles of shifting them, especially the uh, the uh, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. Then that will help the thing shift smoother. But the resistors are quite tight coming out of the factory. back to his parking spot and that's what happens when you don't have your seat belt you will just rev up down up down you think something is wrong with your router make sure you have your seat belt on that way you can get the full power you can rev it up rev it down do whatever you want to do i really enjoy the soft uh, control power steering kl2 tires awesome but soon be going to 15s with uh, bigger tires so that's just a look of my neighborhood how it looks everything looks really gloomy but it's so beautiful in summer when everything is gloomy uh, that's the Roxor mm -hmm. mod which seems to be its element it loves it right there mod snow <laughs> uh, slippery terrain so yeah over the next couple of weeks once i get a windshield then this will become my daily driver for the whole of uh, spring and summer yep 
and uh, that's just a quick walk around what it looks like right now. So far, um, I spent about two months not driving this Rockstar at all until temperatures warmed up. So, yeah, I'm really excited. From tomorrow, we will be in the probably 50s, 40s during the day, and much of the snow will be gone. So, pretty excited there. Uh, my new registration insurance is in there. It's jumping. And park it. Put it in gear. It's in reverse. Uh, that you see, just to show you the rust I'm having on my um, seat belt clips not a problem that shouldn't be a problem for anyone i mean it's just something cosmetic uh, those things are how do you call it i guess they painted on but the fundamental uh, function of the seat belt i believe is still intact nothing to worry about there I'm trying to get into four high Usually when that happens, I just rock it a little bit. That's uh, too too high and four high. Boom, ready to shift. I got some eyes in the cup holders. Can you believe that? Look at how beautiful that is. I just couldn't believe it. You know, after you know when ice melts, it, it thaws, uh, and then it freezes again. Water freezes, back and forth, back and forth. You get you get these very beautiful shapes. And there I have the plug, uh, the cover for my Marine OBD2 um, receptacle under my, uh, the driver side, uh, under the steering wheel. So I'll keep that one. And uh, I guess now we're ready to back up. Oh, we move forward first. Maybe just do a lap around the block. And see how the engine does. It's all warmed up. Those are my KO2s. They wouldn't be there for too much longer. I had to get something bigger, more performing. These are good for streets, uh, but with the snow, they, they, they just don't perform. You will get stuck. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. Uh, slightest snow, slightest loss. I heard some people say it's because it doesn't throw out the snow. Yeah, they are. The cleats on there, they are very tight. So this would be per perfectly in uh, slippery conditions, but not snow above like three inches. And you just fill up those cleats and then you can start. Go to the lap around the block. Uh, with mud, and if you're traveling at a consistent speed and the mud is not too bad, I believe it should be able to sling all of the mud out for the chaotic. Yeah, they're fantastic for somebody in a nice environment but it tends to get harsh out here and you don't want to be uh, to get caught the boondocks with, without the appropriate tire so that's one of the reasons why i want to do away with that second is just to get something bigger you know, put on spacers that way the rocks doesn't have that uh, weird look thanks for watching that's uh, enough for today and uh, see you on the next one bye